I, I've, I thought long and hard about this one because I have been surrounded by so many great military minds and so many good effective military leaders. I was really fortunate and blessed during my time. Um, these are the type of type of people who could leave the military and waltz right into like a boardroom of a Fortune 500 company and never skip a beat. They could just run it. Um, and so those were the type of folks that I emulated and looked up to. Um, the biggest lesson I think that I've learned in now six years of managing 40 to 50 people um, is that when you walk into a room with 40 or 50 people, you know, bearing down on you, not everyone is going to agree with you. Not everyone is going to like what you say. Um, not everyone's going to understand why you're doing the things you're doing as a leader. And not everyone will even follow you the way that you want them to. Um, so you have to come to terms with that um, as a leader and know that most of your employees won't have the full picture. They may never have the full picture, um, but you have to ask yourself constantly, what can I do to paint that picture for them? Um, you know, to tell them why I'm doing things the way that I'm doing them. Um, how to build that trust with them. Because I do think people have a natural predisposition to mistrust authority and, and possibly that includes their boss. Um, but you can erode, you can get rid of that, that distrust by being an effective leader and explaining things the way, um, the way that you feel about them and, and why you're doing things that way. Um, and I call that pressure, um, the pressure of making your folks understand the burden of command. And that's a common term in the military circles. Um, but I, I see it now, even with the city and county of Denver. Um, and what that means is how, how do I change their natural tendencies and perceptions of me? Um, how do I get them to relate to me on a personal level, yet still maintain my duties as a manager and as a leader? And I had a really good uh, leader that I, again, emulated in the Marines. And he would always talk about likership versus leadership. And I see that, I saw it in the Marines, I see it now. Um, how do you as a leader get on the same level as, as your people, show compassion, show genuine concern, show respect to them, and in a way become a friend? And how do you balance that with getting the job done? And having them do whatever duties you need them to do up into including possibly sending them into battle um, which to me is more of the leadership side of that coin and so it's it's a tough it's a tough delicate balance uh, I, there's a line really and sometimes I'll show up to work and I'm not in the greatest mood and I may swing to one side of that line I may swing more towards the managerial leadership, I just need to get the job done sort of line. Sometimes there are factors above me that are out of my control that make me do that. But on the other hand, I'm always fighting to come back to the middle ground where there's likership, likership component involved in that as well. And so I'm relating with my people, I'm telling them why I'm doing things. Um, but really I think that line that I'm talking about on the spectrum of likership and leadership, it's drawn in the sand. And it's never really going to be a straight solid line and I've seen a few people and I'm not one of them but I've seen a few people who can walk that line um, and their people love them and they'll go to hell and back for them but they'll also be highly effective in getting the job done and they'll also do all of that while having the authority to hire fire discipline do things that are kind of the you know, not so fun sides of being a manager um, I've seen a few people who can pull that off. Uh, every single day, though, I, I try to learn one new thing. You know, I try to read a book, I try to watch a, a TED Talk or something and learn one new thing about how do I kind of stay true to that line so that I'm not dictatorial, I'm not authoritarian. My people still respect me for what I do, but they also understand why I'm doing it. And they're willing to go to bat for me, they're willing to do the job that I ask them to do. 
and I think that's a really fine line to walk. Um, and heck, I'm I'm still learning. After being a, a manager manager or officer in the Marines, and now having been a manager in the city for almost three years, it's still a still a strong lesson that's constantly burning in my mind. Is that they're compatible. You can cross over. They're not mutually exclusive. Um, you don't just have to be liked, and you also don't just have to be a leader. Be you, you can be caught up in the middle, and you can flow between the two. Um, on on one hand, it's being a genuine, compassionate friend. Um, that's the liker part, and then the leader part is um, being effective, being effective in your management. Um, because one major topic that I wanted to cover was likership um, without leadership will lead to complacency and leadership without likership will just lead to complicity so people just complying with what you ask them to do um, through your authority and both of those can cause problems so you have to navigate those two things and figure out how to bring everyone back to that that middle ground that line but they're certainly not mutually exclusive. You can you can ebb and flow, crossover, and like I said, depends on the mood, the atmosphere of your people, what's going on, how busy you are as an organization. Kind of will determine how you're going to kind of swim through that line. Um, and it's not easy. It's not easy. I still don't know how to do it. And through all the lessons I learned in the military, and now at the city, I'm still focusing every single day on how to balance those two things and how to bring them together and merge them into becoming a you know effective manager and a leader